Hi, I'm Michelle Sparks, narrator from Los Angeles, California, and you're listening to Bookin' Around Town with Jacques on the Audio Flow, connecting authors and readers one town at a time. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for this week's episode of Booking Around Town. I'm your host, Jacques, and today we are booking around the town of Panama City. Although today's guest is not from Panama City, she's originally from Central Texas, but since she's on her way to the 1001 Dark Nights cruise, we thought we'd book around that area. Please help me welcome today's guest, New York Times bestselling author, USA Today bestselling author and the number one international bestselling author, Jay Kenner. Hi, Julie. Welcome to Booking Around Town. How is it going? It's going great. Thanks so much for having me. You are so welcome. And of course, you guys know that this episode could not be possible without a couple of Skype um, technical issues, which happens on every show. So just so you know, Julie, you weren't the first to have that Skype um, issue. We have it all the time. I wanted to be special. (laughs) (laughs) You are special because you are the first person I'm giving a nickname to at the beginning of the show. So everybody, just so you know, Julie is now known as J. Dot. Yes, she is J. Dot. (laughs) Rap master J Dot. <laughs> she will not be rapping or not anything. Be rapping. Yeah, yeah. You gotta buy my album for that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And this is not a sneak peek. We just wanted to That's unveil right. her new name. So there you have it. It's J Dot. <laughs> well, it's so funny because when I met you, when I saw you at Shameless, I, you know, you may not even remember this, but I actually met you at RT in Vegas. And, um, it was, it was very short. I, I was really new to romance books, so I had no idea who you were. Actually, I had no idea who anybody at that event was. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Like I went and I knew nobody, <laughs> but, um, I was there because a friend of mine, um, had some books. I think that you, um, co-authored with some, uh, Shayla Black maybe. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, and so I had these little books that, you know, I don't even think they make them that. The Rising anymore. Storm book? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. That was Rising Storm is my baby. Me and Dee Davis. We created that. Well, I came over to your table and I was like, will you sign these books for me? And and then um, you said, well, the other author, you was like, well, they're here, but they're in their room. So you gave me your phone number on a sticky note and said, call me and we can get them all signed. Of course, I was so nervous. I was like, I'm not going to call her. That's weird. Um, but I did text you and I had just missed um, getting them signed, but you were so friendly and it was, it was just so nice to see that, um, people that we follow on Facebook or that we read and we get to know, um, online, it still has that same attitude and spirit when we meet them personally. So I, J dot, you rock. I'm just, (laughs) yay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I'm happy that I finally got a chance to have you on the show because I've been following you just in the background. You don't see me around too much, but I've been following you and you write in every genre. I, how do you even get through uh, being able to do that effectively, and do you even have a genre that you would say you enjoy most? You know, I I don't have a genre that I enjoy most. I it, it's a weird question because you say effectively, and honestly, I you know I don't know really in the grand scheme of things just how effective it is. I mean, if you, I'm happy with my career. I think mm-hmm. you know I and I love all the books that I write, and I don't think I would be happy only writing in one genre, but. You know, then you think about it from a practical standpoint. If I'd had someone standing behind me going, this is how you, you know, need to do it, they mm-hmm. would not have said, let's write in 97 genres. You know, that right. would not have been their advice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I mean, I think that certainly career paths can go uphill faster if mm-hmm. you stick with one genre, you know, mm-hmm. but. But, you know, for me, that also, you know, my mind is always, I'm, uh, you know, it's just bouncing all over creation. So do I have a favorite? Um, You know, I get so sucked into whatever book that I'm working (laughs) on that it's like, that's my favorite at the time. But I will say, I think that the, 
the really sexy, sort of almost a little bit dark, really emotionally driven books, which have, which have sort of marked my career as Jay Kenner, um, mm-hmm. are really right now. They're very much my favorite. And, um, um, more so than even my lighter stuff. Although I, I really love the, um, family dramas that I do with, um, my demon hunting soccer mom series. Those are not romance. There are, they are suburban fantasy or paranormal mommy lit or I don't really know what they are. Um, I was fiction. just going to ask you, I was like, what is paranormal mommy lit? I'm pretty sure that I, well, actually I know that I coined the term and I think I'm also the only one who uses it. So they're my books, but it's, um, I have a series about a demon hunting soccer mom. It's sort of like what would happen if Buffy the vampire slayer grew up and kept her past yes. a secret. And uh-huh. they're, they're, they're very light. They're structured as mysteries. Um, um, but they have a, a really intense core of family and underneath the surface of the light, which is mostly because of Kate's, the heroine's person the narrator, heroine and narrator's personality. Um, there are, uh, real issues about like home and family and marriage and commitment mm-hmm. and, you know, all that kind. Of, and then later we get into some even darker stuff too, but so they're, they're light with, with depth, which, um, you know, frankly, I think that's I'm, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is one of my favorite shows. And I, and I, I think that's one of the reasons it actually has lasted 20 years and still feels so fresh is because it has that, that core underneath mm-hmm. it. So I think that that, although I didn't really see that in my writing early on, I think that the books of mine that tend to resonate the most with me are those that have that sort of deeper kind of emotional thing as opposed to like some of the lighter romantic comedies that I've done over the years. I love them. They're a lot of fun, but they're not the ones that kind of stick with me. You know, Mm -hmm. they're not the, not like the heavy meal that kind of stays with you. You know, they're more like the cotton candy you have at the carnival, which is, and both are good, you know, both are fun. Um, because everybody needs that extra sugar in their diet. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Or or, or coffee, you know, sugar or coffee. (laughs) <laughs> I think that most people enjoyed Buffy the Vampire Slayer and so when you when you mentioned paranormal mommy lit I I find myself wanting to go and gravitate toward that just because I was a big fan of Buffy and still am and um and just because you use paranormal mommy lit, I got I said I have to tell you it's somewhere on my Facebook page. I don't know where because I posted it, but I'm, um, I, I go to, um, Dragon Con a lot, which is a sci-fi fantasy convention uh-huh. in Atlanta every Labor Day. And I'm not going this year, unfortunately. I'm really sad, but, but I have gone a lot, sometimes just as a guest and sometimes, and uh, sometimes just as one of the crowd. But usually I go as a guest of the con, like talking about urban fantasy or cause I have a couple of urban fantasy series or the demon, the demon books cause they're still very popular. Um, and so I, um, um, was there last year with my daughter and um, James Marsters, who played Spike, actually oh, recorded a favorite. little. favorite. I know he's so <laughs> awesome, and he like doesn't have a British accent at all, right? So, but he, he doesn't. He, no, he's not British. He's American. He said that. Um, oh God, I can't. I'm blanking. Um, the guy who plays Giles, I can't think of his name right now. Um, he really is British, and, uh-huh. and James Marsters says that he. Um, I can't believe I'm blanking. I know all these characters so uh, well, but okay. anyway, I'll that, find him. Keep talking. That he, um, <laughs> that he was actually like, he would help James Marsters get his accent right. So he's like in the beginning of the series, it's not as good as it is later because, you know, Giles was like saying, Rupert. you know, you wanker. It's Rupert. Yeah. Yeah. No, Rupert Giles. Uh, his, his, his name is Anthony Head. Name. Anthony Head. Yes, was was telling him, he's like, you, you know, you wanker. You don't say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he recorded he recorded a promo video for me and it was so cute and so nice because he kept flubbing the words. So he's like, you know, read Julie's demon slaying zombie mom. And then he's like, he's like, oh, that, and he did it like two or three times. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. You don't have to keep doing it. He's like, no, we're going to get this right. And he was just the <laughs> nicest guy. I was like, that's so cool. You're so nice. I'm so jealous but because he was I'm totally my favorite. He was totally my favorite character on Buffy. I- oh, me too. Oh man, and he's not I'm totally bad. Team Spike. I'm totally Team Spike. Me I thought too. Angel, yeah, Angel was like, yeah, whatever. No yeah. arc, no arc. I'm sorry. <laughs> and you know what's so great? It's, it's so funny about it because I think that was kind of the end for me for anything that dealt with vampires, so to speak. Is mm-hmm. 
was Buffy, and I was such a big fan of Spike. I mean, Angel was okay, but it was something about his snark and his um, his attitude, and he was just so funny and sarcastic that, you know, he just brought that different spin to the show that you couldn't help but like Spike. It was just, you know. Now, not, not, to, not to, like, turn this into, like, a Buffy chat, but did you know <laughs> that they only they only intended him to be one season? Angel really? was going to kill him. Yeah, he told this great story at Dragon Con. I took notes, but of course I couldn't find them while we're talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, this is so cool. Yeah, and um, and he didn't want that to happen, so he like made it his mission that he was gonna, you know, get um Josh Whedon, Josh Whedon to keep him on the show, and and he succeeded, you know, marvelously. I mean, I just I just thought that I couldn't believe that, you know, because he just blew into that show, and he did. You can kind of tell if you know when you look at how they're writing and everything. It's like, okay, yeah, this is gonna be the thing, and. And, um, I can't remember exactly how it was going to work, but, um, anyway, it doesn't matter, but yeah, he was not supposed to last throughout the whole show. So I think it's really cool that, you know, spoiler alert, he gets the big <laughs> moment at the end, you know, cause he wasn't even supposed to be around by then. Yeah. So I just, I just, I just love, as a writer, I love how that kind of thing works because I've had characters that mm-hmm. I had intended to, you know, they weren't going to really go very far. They weren't going to have their own book or maybe they were going to get whacked or something. And then you like, you fall in love with them. It's like, oh, wow. So this person obviously is going to have a bigger role than I thought. And, and it's just, it's just really cool when that happens. Now, do you whack off a lot of your characters? You know, I will, I guess, I guess considering I write a lot of sex then um, you know, it depends on how you want to answer that question. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Pun intended. But if you're saying, do I kill them off? Um, you know, not very often. I tend to have a sus- an element of suspense in a lot of my books, um, but the but you know main characters I, I don't. Um, I mean, I did in the demon book. I did kill some, one character who fans were not expecting, and it was hard. But it, it I, the story needed to go another direction, and and it, we needed to shake it up a little bit. And uh-huh. so um, and that was hard. I cried. Um, but but usually when I kill somebody, it's a secondary character. I can't I'm trying to think if there's anybody other than other than in the demon books where I killed like a main character who, who people you know really and genuinely fall in love with. But I'm not really a suspense writer. You know, I have I have. I, I bump up against suspense, but I'm not, you know, I'm not writing romantic suspense. So mm-hmm. there's not a whole lot of whacking off to do of, of that kind. <laughs> but the other kind, you tend, you, you, they whack off. <laughs> they, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't know how involved I am in it. They probably don't want me as a third wheel there, but there is definitely that going on. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so funny. So I am, of course, I, when I have these chats, I have, you know, my notes and I go through things and I'm always looking at book covers and all that kind of stuff. And your career has spanned, you know, you've had a, a writing career that spanned over uh, 10 years. And um, oh, more than that, yeah. Uh, yeah, over 10. <laughs> that's why I said over 10. We'll leave it at 10, 20. It's, yeah, because I'm, I'm only 21. So, you know, exa- it would be really you know, hard. So 10 is good. You started at 11, you know. And um, <laughs> so um, when you when you decided to go into, what was the thing that, you know, kind of propelled you into writing and becoming an author? And what's that journey been like since you started? Um, and what are some, I know this is like a three-part question. I was going to say, this is like a really long question. So um, <laughs> I'm going to break it down. Okay. <laughs> so what <laughs> propelled you into your writing career? Well, it's okay. So I have always wanted to be a writer. I mean, I honestly that was literally the first thing I can remember wanting to do. And then there were the, you know, moving off and saying, okay, I want to be a veterinarian. I want to be an astronaut. But, you know, I always wanted to be a writer. I would sit in my dad's office. We had this really cool house that had a loft over the living room with a spiral staircase. And he had, okay, now you really are going to know how old I am because he had a typewriter that was manual. And so I would write so fast on it. And this is before I even knew how to read. I was just telling stories that the keys would get all smooshed together. And, you know, you had to undo them manually. I don't know. And, um, but I was telling these stories. And so I always wanted to do that, but I'm also very, um, I guess type A. And so by the time I got to, and I was like on the journalism staff thinking, okay, I could be a journalist and I can write that way, but I really want to make up my own stuff. I'm not really that interested in reporting about what other people are doing. It's like, I want to talk about these people that are living in my head, but there's really no path 
for at least especially back then, I mean, now you've got the internet as this amazing resource. I mean, you want to know how to do anything. You can just look it up. You know, it's, it's insane. But back then there's, there was really nothing. I mean, if you didn't know somebody who knew how to do something, it was just like, and, and it was very scary because I, like I said, I'm type A, I like getting, you know, a salary I wanted, you know, and being freelance is, is a scary, scary thing. And there was nothing in college that was like, you know, become a novelist 101 and then you get your degree and you get your job and you sit in the basement like, you know, like <laughs> they did back in the day of the penny novels and, you know, write books and they, you know, give you a paycheck, but it, it doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. So I ended up um, <clears throat> getting a film degree um, and I graduated college really young and I was too chicken to move to Los Angeles um, that young because I had visions that, you know, a house cost a million dollars and my apartment would cost 5000 I mean, I was just like, it just scared me. And, um, so I was working with my film degree in Austin, Texas, in this crappy, crappy job that didn't really have anything to do with anything. And I had sort of thought that maybe I'd be a screenwriter. But by that point, I was just like, I just I don't know what to do. I need something where I feel like I'm like I have a job, you know, mm-hmm. like I know what's what's happening and how it's working. And I ended up taking the LSAT, the, the law school admissions test. Mm-hmm. And I did really well on it. And I got into law school and I did really well in law school. And I liked it. I mean, I really genuinely like I liked law school a lot. I, I loved it. I would I was the geek who would camp outside the professor's offices and, you know, discuss, you know, one sentence in Marbury versus Madison for like five hours. I mean, I was totally that geek. Um, and, and I ended up moving to Los Angeles as a lawyer thinking that maybe I could do entertainment law, you know, kind of, cause I had my film degree then, you know, and I mm-hmm. probably wasn't going to be a director. I don't, I'm not a visual person at all, you know, and I still didn't know how to be a screenwriter. I mean, I just had no clue, but I thought, well, if I'm in LA, I'm closer. And I ended up practicing law, which I did not like nearly as much as I like the academic side of law, the practice of law kind of frustrated me. And so as I'm out there, I started, I, I'd sort of smush down my desire to write because I'm so busy. I mean, pr- practicing law and studying law takes a lot of time. And mm-hmm. during, when I was working on the Fifth Circuit, I actually wrote a play that I was looking for recently. I wanted to see if it was any good, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it isn't and I can't find it anyway. But I did write a play and I wrote a few, you know, crappy beginnings to novels and things like that. And, um, never did anything with any of them, but the, I got the creative buzz, bug again when I was in Los Angeles. And so I started writing, um, screenplays with a partner. Um, and then when I left Los Angeles and moved down to Orange County, this was in the days when the internet was really just a CDOS prompt. Oh, and gosh. so we really, <laughs> we, it wasn't really like we could keep in touch easily. We would have uh-huh. to like drive to write together. Uh-huh. And, um, and so, I, I still wanted to write. So I wanted to write novels. And so I thought, well, I'm a lawyer and John Grisham was doing really well with that. So I thought, well, I will, you know, write a legal thriller. The problem was I was burned out with being a lawyer. Mm-hmm. And so it was like the least thrilling thriller ever in the history of the universe. <laughs> Cause I was so frustrated with doing discovery and looking through boxes of documents and answering interrogatories. And, and so one day, I mean, I literally know the moment one day I was sitting in the break room of my job then and my friend was who I usually ate lunch with and chatted and gossiped was reading. And, um, and I was like, you know, wanting to talk. And she's like, I'm at the end of this great book. Leave me alone. And I'm <laughs> like, shut uh. up. <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm like, uh. and she's like, here. And she handed me a Julie Garwood book. Now uh-huh. I grew up reading everything. I mean, mm-hmm. everything, but my library, we had this little bitty library near my house when I was in junior high and high school and nothing was organized by genre. It was organized everything um, by the alphabetical, by the author's last name. So I read things, but I never really, you know, thought about genres unless it was like Agatha Christie or something. Mm -hmm. And so, but I'd never read Julie Garwood before and I loved it. So I started writing a historical romance thinking I could do this, (laughs) except I can't do that because (laughs) it was, I do not have a head for historical stuff. And there was no Google at the time and I would have to have lived. And I got to like 90 pages in and I was like, I don't even know if this hero would have a sword. I mean, I don't even know if he would use money to buy things. I know nothing. And, and I don't really have time to go to the library to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I'm complaining to this same friend and she looks at me like I'm the biggest loser on the planet. (laughs) And she goes, you know, there are romances that are contemporary, right? (laughs) And so she handed me, she, again, she pulls into like her magic tote bag and pulled out, um, Vicki, one of Vicki Lewis Thompson's books. And I wish I could remember which one it was. I 
think it was Mr. Valentine, but I will mm-hmm. have to say, I'll be honest and say I'm not entirely positive, but I think it was Mr. Valentine. And I read it and I was like, oh my God, not only is it contemporary, and it was a Harlequin Temptation with a spunky contemporary heroine, which is exactly what I was drawn to, mm-hmm. but it's only about 50,000 words, which was half the length of you know, uh, your usual novel, which at that time, now they're tending to be a little bit shorter, but at that time, a standard novel that publishers were expecting was about a hundred thousand more. So it was like half. And I'm like, I'm working crazy hours as a lawyer, half, you know, writing a book that's half the link seems really smart. Mm -hmm. So I, I dove in with a passion to, um, uh, to target Harlequin temptation. And, and that is how I broke in. I, I sold my my second manuscript, my second completed manuscript. I mean, I, I was, like I said, I've been writing my whole life with both bits and starts and silly things at the beginning and whatever, but, um, to Brenda Chen at Harlequin Temptation back in the day. And, um, yeah, so that was that. And then after that, it sort of had opened the floodgates and I was like, well, if I, by that time I'd written two book, two manuscripts, right? So I was like, well, if I could do that, then I can write one longer book too. So I sold them um, some paranormal romances. The, it was a, um, it's come out as the cat's fancy. It was like the little mermaid, um, only as a cat. Um, and I, it was really fun. And then I did a series of superhero romances and, and I kind of, you know, my writing kind of grew up after that. And I, the chick lit hit and I wanted to do that. So I did a little bit of that. I did these fashion chick lit books and then I did my, my demon books and, mm-hmm. um, just on and on from there. Yeah. So, but, but it really was, it was, I can, you know, I can credit my career to my friend Barbara because she was the one who told me to shut up in the lunchroom. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Barbara. <laughs> but I, I love that in the midst of that story that you were able to kind of um, look at where you were and take what you've learned um, in law and transpose it into into writing and and kind of reading and finding out where you wanted to be. You know, um, you mentioned, you know, earlier when I said that you write across genres and I Mm -hmm. like that you said that you kind of, you, you don't have a favorite, but you kind of, whatever headspace you're in, that's what you're writing. And that's what you're enjoying at that time, Mm -hmm. which is, I think very, I, I think I am, can appreciate that because sometimes it's just for readers. Um, Not all readers just read one type of book. And so it's really fun to see when an author can write across genres and enjoy them all um, the same. So it's not just, okay, Jay Kenner, Julie is just known for her demon stories and that's all she writes. And she tried to do another, you know, she tried to do a urban fantasy and it sucked. Well, no, it didn't. It was great. (laughs) Just as good as those erotic romances and those other things. And, um, and so what, you know, from that, from your learning about your art of writing and your journey into writing, um, what kind of advice would you give to someone who is looking to either start writing, um, and not really sure you know, how to go about doing it? What are some things that you would give them as advice about, you know, what's planned? What do you start? What's number one? Well, read a lot. I mean, I think that one of the reasons that any author who can successfully write across genres, it's because it's all about the characters ultimately, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's about the characters and what they're doing. And then you put them in certain parameters. I mean, that's the thing that a genre is. I mean, you know, people are always saying, Oh, those romance novels, they always have, you know, that happily ever after. It's like, well, yeah, have you ever read a mystery? They always catch the dude, you know, I mean, they they have a formula Uh Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You work in the parameters of a formula. And frankly, that really fosters creativity. But so read a lot and, and write a lot and don't keep editing the same thing because the other thing too is everybody has a voice, but you don't really find your voice until you've written a lot, you know, until you've written a lot of pages and then your, your, what's your true voice will come out. That's one thing. I change my tone for different books, but readers who really and truly know me will see, hear my voice in all of them. Mm-hmm. Like the voice in the Demon Hunting Soccer Mom books, which have gigabs of snark in them there is there are similarities to like release me which is not snarky at well there's character snark but it's not its tone is much darker 
Mm -hmm. So your voice will come out the more you write, but from a career. So that's like a kind of a craft thing. Know your characters, um, figure out what your style of writer is. Mm -hmm. Um, I can only plan so far and then I can't go any further unless I talk it out with someone or actually just sit there and dive into the writing. Cause mm-hmm. my, inside my head, it'll go, it'll be like, um, why are we doing this? We need to be like writing, you know, and, <laughs> and it'll shut down. I mean, and it took me a long time to realize that because I have friends who will outline their books in minute detail. I mean, minute detail. And I can write a synopsis and do that, but then I'm actually telling the story, but I mean, they'll just do like little notes and I'm like, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but most important of all, I think, is to not do what I did um, and and to actually stick with a genre, especially in the market that we're in right now. Not necessarily forever, but mm-hmm. at least for a few books, because, you know, if your reader buys your first book and they're like, oh, my God, I love this. It was such a great heartwarming story. And then they see that your next book is a slasher horror book, <laughs> then they're going to be like, what? <laughs> you know, so you need to at least, you know, you need to at least milk the genre um, so that your readers, because reader expectation is a real thing. And, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, in, in certain respects, I wish that had I t- to do it differently, I probably would have planned things differently. But I mean, I see it even in myself. I mean, I am a huge fan of Anne Perry's, um, Charlotte and Thomas Pitt novels. I love them. I absolutely love them. Couldn't care less about her Inspector Monk series. Not even interested in reading it. I'm a mm-hmm. huge fan of J.D. Robb. I've only read two Nora Roberts books in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I love the J.D. Robb books. I will run over people to like be able to get a copy of those books. I mean, you know, but, but, and it's the same author. So it's mm-hmm. not, so I understand when readers are like, oh, I only read your romances. I get it. Mm-hmm. I wish they wouldn't. It's like, but I'm an exception. Yeah. <laughs> I read all of my I'm J. Don't. Dot. That's, That's what you right. say. Hey, I'm J. Dot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's important and good advice. Um, I'm writing this down too because you know that's that's kind of where I am. A side note in writing is I have no idea where I'm supposed to be, and I want to do them all. There's like a million stories, and none of them are in just one genre. Um, that's how I am. I mean, my friends laugh because I mean, you know, that it's like I have squirrel syndrome. It's like squirrel, ooh, shiny. Ooh. <laughs> Shiny, pretty story. I want to go tell my shiny, pretty story. And they're like, well, that's nice. But your shiny, pretty story is like, you know, a, you know, second person psychological thriller (laughs) set in, you know, Serbia in the 1100s. Do you really (laughs) think your readers are going to go there? It's like, maybe not. Okay. You know, I mean, but it's shiny. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's me. Yeah, you just, I'm, I'm, me and you are kindred spirits then because (laughs) we like shiny things. (laughs) Okay, so this is what I wanted I want to talk about because you mentioned that you um you can only plan out so far and so when you and I were discussing, you know, what's coming down um the pike for you, what's what's your year looking like and you said, "Oh, well, I've got the the man of the month series and here's the and then you gave me like this really long list of all the books that are going to be that are releasing from January through July and then I go yeah. on Amazon and they have well, probably a little bit, maybe a little longer than that, but I go on Amazon and they've all got book covers and they're all sitting there. And I'm like, how in the world? I, I just need to know how you. I like a challenge. What can I say? You know, no, I, it's, um, this is a series that the idea came to me. I think it was, must've been 20. 15, maybe even 2014 in very vague terms, but I was kind of amazed that no one had actually ever done it, but I wanted to do a series of standalone novels, but that kind of felt like a net, I'm a binge reader. I mean, Mm -hmm. if I, if a, if a series is out and I mean, if if someone's reading, I'm reading a series and I can't get the next book and I love the world we live in right now. Can I just say as a reader, because nobody waits a year to put out their sequel anymore. It's like, yeah, yeah, give me it, you know? Um, but you know, I don't want to wait. I'm like, I will literally my and drive my family crazy. Cause if we're watching a new, a new show on Netflix and they're all there, I'm like, well, we can just stay up all night and watch them. Why can't, why is that a problem? Why can't we do that? What's wrong with you guys? Cause I want to, I want the story. I want it right then. I want the whole thing. And, um, 
it's sort of what 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 D and I crafted with Rising Storm. Although Rising Storm was was more of a soap opera, it was a it was a, a an over a whole bunch of stories about people that lived in this small town. But I, and that's kind of that was like kind of the first incarnation of kind of this this just this sort of format that I want to play in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to do this series with like all of these friends coming together. So it's basically, I don't know, Magic Mike needs cheers. Um, Cause it's all centered around a bar and we have, you know, really hot guys who take off their shirts. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and so it, it, over time, the concept developed, I wanted to make sure that readers could go in and go out. So each book is a standalone romance with a happily ever after. Now that's not to say there aren't plot things left open because mm-hmm. each book is slotted into an overarching story of a group of friends saving this, this bar in Austin, mm-hmm. Texas, which happens to be my hometown. Um, but each romance is resolved. There's no, there's no romantic cliffhangers, you know, nobody's going to shut the door and it's like, I didn't know if I want to be with him or not. You know, it's, we have a romance. Mm-hmm. So you've got 12 books that you can dive in and you can read and you can enjoy. And if you read them all in order, you get the story of what happens to this actual bar that all these people are trying to save and all the bits and pieces of it. And it's super fun and kind of complex because not, not as much as I thought it was going to be, thank goodness. But there are scenes that, you know, show up from different points of view mm-hmm. as the books progress. So, you know, you'll see one scene from, you know, Jenna's point of view, and then you'll see that uh, the same scene from like Brooke's point of view in the next book because they were having a conversation and now we see it, you know, with on Brooke's side of it and what's going on in her head, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And it's, it's really fun and it's really challenging. And um, I thought about spreading it out over the course of an entire year, but that didn't, help me with my whole idea of having a binge read, you know? So, and then I was going to do them one. I was originally going to drop them all on the same day. And then I was like, well, that's stupid because who's going to read 12 books in a day and people are just going to get overwhelmed and run screaming from the room. And that didn't <laughs> seem like a good idea. So then I was going to do them one a week. Um, and then when I was talking to my, my people, my, my, my assistant and my um, PR um, girl, we were, we realized that, you know, you actually do have to like let readers know a, that a book is out and B, the book is coming. Mm -hmm. And if there, if you don't have that time in between to do each of those jobs, then the book is going to not get its full shot. So we made it two weeks because then you have a week to say, Hey, the book's out. And then you can shift gears to, Oh, and by the way, the next one's coming. So that's how we ended up on two weeks, which I think is, is still very binge reedy. Um, Mm -hmm. and then the audio books are actually going to come out all at one time. So it'll be a binge list. For sure. Yes. Yeah, it's, so it's all one big audio book or it's, no, it's- there. Well, they, we've left it open for, um, the, um, the, the audio producer to, um, the, the folks who bought the sub, the subsidiary rights um, uh-huh. to decide, but what it, we think that they're going to do, what they are, what they're talking about doing. And I don't really anticipate them changing their mind, but they could is because they're shorter books, they're 50,000 word ish. Each one's coming in right around 50. Mm-hmm. Um, probably grouping them in books in two. So okay. that you get two. So it'd be six audio unit thingies, okay. you know, full length books. <laughs> six and then audio um, unit thingies. Unit thingies. That's yeah. That's my technical <laughs> term. <laughs> so that's going to happen. And then, you know, eventually I'll bundle them too, probably. And since, since all the guys are, so it centers around the guys doing a calendar contest, which is one of the, like the centerpiece for the, the, the effort to save this bar. Um, and so, you know, we have a calendar that, you know, you can, you know, buy on my website and I also use it. Um, uh, sometimes I'll give it away for swag and stuff like that, but we've got the calendar so you can see the actual beef cake shots of the guys in the calendar. And then on the covers there, you know, they have their shirts on and they're buttoned up and they look very wholesome. Well, some not so wholesome as others, but, yes. um, and then you've got them being all hot and sexy inside the calendar and, um, and I was going somewhere with that. What was it? Uh, it I doesn't even, you, let me tell you where I work. am while you're talking about the covers and the calendars. So I'm stuck. I'm just going through all of the book covers. And um, for those of you guys who have not gone to the Zon, Amazon and scroll <laughs> through and looked at the covers, they are very scrumptious covers. And, they are. Um, I really, really like them. And all of the guys we did, none of them are stock photos. Um, Melissa Rhinelander, my assistant, Anissa uh-huh. Garcia, who's another author, um, and Danny Sanchez, who was, at that time was working with me on doing publicity for uh-huh. before in advance. We did um, 
uh, the cover shoot, we auditioned a gazillion guys Mm -hmm. and then we hired these guys and we did it all in one day. Um, the, the, the cover shots, the, uh, a few of the, and the calendar shots too. a few of the calendar shots we, um, did, I guess, pickups, you know, we did a few extra ones later, but it was really fun. We had a little shuttle bus of guys like going around and, we were shooting in a bar and on sixth street in Austin, Texas. And you know, the guys, these buff, totally buff muscled guys who obviously work out a lot. were running across the streets <laughs> of voodoo donuts of all places and then eating them. And I'm sitting here going, Oh my God, you know, I did that and I can't even get in my jeans and you're sitting there looking super hot. What's up with that? Totally unfair. Uh, all I know is, um, if you ever need like, another set of eyes to help with photo shoots if you do man of the month next year. So I'm, I'm volunteering. Well, you know, it was interesting because this was the first, um, cover shoot I have ever done because in the past, my, um, traditional titles, you know, the publisher took care of that. And my indie titles, um, we used stock photo for everything, for everything. I had not had any. And so I was kind of trial by fire to do, you know, one with so many guys. It was like, okay, let's know, talk about jumping off into the deep end. But but it's really fun. And the the guys are great. I did a, um, and they're really great. Like there's a cookbook associated with the series Mm too. And so, um, Mr. What month is he? April, Mr. April, um, came over to my house and we cooked, um, um, actually, we, um, one of the recipes from the cookbook and Mr. February is coming, um, a few days after his book comes out actually to do that again. And then we're going to try to do, I don't know that I can get all 12 guys because of schedules and stuff, but I'm hoping to get at least one a month who goes along with one of the books that are coming out that month. So oh, that is so nice. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. And, and since we did it here and most everybody is local ish, you know, there's mm-hmm. a, um, I think, I think, um, um, what month is Mr. Gosh, I need to January, February, March, April, Mr. May, I believe lives in Houston, but I think he's coming up. He's coming up anyway. So I'm excited about that. And it's really great. And they've just been terrific. I mean, the guys are just all really super nice. And, um, and yeah, it's just, it's just a lot of fun. And, um, two of them are going to be with me at, well, they're going to be at RT. They're going to be doing some stuff with me and then also, um, for RT. So, um, that's Mr. Uh, April and Mr. December. So they will be at RT. So I love that cool. you give them names like the Playboy cap, the Playgirl calendar. It's like, well, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I don't know if I should call them by their real name or their character name, but hey, you know, I figure, you know, there is, it is a calendar. That is my shtick. So we might as well go that way. Um, but yeah, that's but the safe zone. The safe so, zone yeah, is so just Dylan and Justin will be at RT and Justin, <laughs> just, um, the model number one and model number 12, Jake Edwards and Justin, um, What's the book? Tell me the book title. That works for me. Down on me and Uh walk the line. They've been on other people's books before. They've done, um, they've done a lot of cover modeling before. So they're my, they're my guys who you, who most readers will actually recognize. Um, Mm -hmm. and, um, but yeah, so it's just been so super fun. I mean, I just have had such a great time with it. So yeah. And I'm, um, down on me comes out the 16th. So we've already had advanced reviews and so far everybody seems to be happy with the book and enjoying it. And I'm really pleased with the way it turns out. I'm actually going to, um, post some sexy snippets on my Facebook page today. That's my task for after we get off the phone. So there'll be some sexy snippets on Facebook later on today. There'll be so they'll some be there sexy for, snippets. They'll be there by the time this podcast goes live. They'll be, and I'm going to post some, I think, a one every day or every other day for, I'm going to go ahead and schedule them for while I'm on the cruise. So there's fun, sexy stuff popping up while I'm on the cruise. Well, yes. So, yeah. so everybody, so she, if you want to go and check out what's happening, you can go to Amazon and see the books, or you make sure that you're following J dot on Facebook so that, <laughs> so that you can get the sexy snippets that she's going to post. And so let's talk about, so what 1001 dark nights, um, mm-hmm. You've had um, a couple of um, novellas uh, published through 1001 Dark Nights. Yeah, I've, I've had at least one a year since 2014. Yeah, at least one a year since 2014. Not all of them have been um, the one, the 1001 Dark Nights covers. Some of them were the blue box specials. So, uh, yeah. Well, I bought, I bought one, two, three from you. 
uh, bought three from you at Shameless. And <laughs> funny story. So I bought them and my mom is not a big reader. But I was like, we're going to read we're going to read these books, moms. They're they're pretty short and it's, it's got some sexy stuff in it. It's paranormal. You like paranormal. So I had it all mapped out. We're going to read it. And then I said, I looked at the signature and it says to Heather, right? And I was like, oh man, this, this isn't even my book. And so, <laughs> so I was traveling with my, my friend and author, Heather Hildenbrand. And I, I text her and I was like, I have your books um, from Julie, from Jay Kenner. And she's like, well, I didn't, I didn't pick up those books. And so I was like, well, who the heck is Heather? So I'm in my head and every, um, every three months, my book group, does a book um, exchange. And so I mm-hmm. forgot I bought those books for my book buddy. Her name is Heather. And oh, so, how funny. <laughs> darn, I had to send her the books <laughs> so, <laughs> because they weren't mine. So my mom and I didn't get to read it. But um, that's so you, the series that's going to be a um, Passion Flicks movie this this year, this year, I think in 2018. Yeah. So I'm excited I'm ex- about that. I'm excited about that too. And so, but I need to get her to read. So I need her to read it first and then I can tell her, oh, by the way, it's going to be a movie and we can watch it on our giant um, TV. But, That's um, right. but so you've got, um, you're going on the 1001 Dark Nights cruise here uh, coming up in a few days, right? Is it? Is yes. It yes. I am going to drive tonight slash tomorrow to Florida Panhandle, stay the night, and then the next day I'm going to drive to Tampa, and then the next day we leave from the port in Tampa. I'm so excited. Me, a whole bunch of other authors, I cannot remember how many we are, and a whole bunch of readers. It's going to be so much fun. I am that so excited. Fun. I'm yeah. really jealous. I wish I could be there, but since I can't be there, just make sure you take a lot of pictures, and when you get it, you know, I'll be stalking your page, and and just a shout out to me, just put J. Dot, so I just know that you posted that picture for me, because that's <laughs> That'll be our signature calling. I know it's J dot. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Love it. So where are you cruising to? What's the port of call? Um, Cozumel. So oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm excited. I was going to do a, um, um, a scuba dive it was going to be my excursion, but, uh-huh. um, apparently I, apparently I'm the only one in our group who was actually interested in doing a dive in Cozumel. So I decided instead of doing the excursion, I'm just going to get off the boat, wander a little bit and then hang on the boat with whatever readers are hanging on the boat. And, um, you know, quite possibly enjoy a fruity, a fruity beverage. Of course. With, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so that should be really, really fun. I'm really, and you know, lazy kind of lazing around the pool kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be great. I have no idea. If, I mean, I, we supposed to have Wi-Fi, so I assume that works. I've never cruised before, so what? Really? Yeah. It's, it's your first cruise? This is my first cruise. Yeah. Oh. I'm like, yeah. Well, I'm totally way over packing. I mean, probably, you know. <laughs> but it's fine. It's it's normal. Everybody does it. So you, they do offer Wi-Fi. You can sign up for it when you um, board the ship there have a desk and you can go and sign up for it I forgot how much it is per day but you can definitely do that but I guarantee you that you will spend most of your time not really on your phone because there's so much stuff to do it's like I'm here yeah that's my understanding I mean but I I need to I'm hoping I can post some pictures during the cruise although I have to admit some people are really good about posting like stuff as they're doing it I'm Uh I'm so not it's like here's my picture from (laughs) We go, isn't it pretty? I was having a good time then. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm a lame social media. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. It's just you're you're in the moment, and and so you capture it and you share it later, which is good as long as you capture the moment. We, I don't care if it's like a month later, as long as I get to see it. But you're gonna have so much fun. It's the only vacation really you can go on where nobody looks at you for drink having a drink at ten o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's, <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do. There you go. <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning, you're having the drink special and everything's good and you eat all day and you're like, I don't even care. That's, that's I'm on vacation. <laughs> I love it. So you're going to be driving down and she's going to be leaving everybody. And so this episode is pre-recorded because, um, 
book one in the man of the month uh, will actually be out when this airs. It does release on January 16th, according mm-hmm. to according to Amazon. And the guy on the cover is is one who's going to be with her at RT, which really no, no, makes not, me... the, not the guy on not the guy on book one. He, he, he well, actually he might which be one? there because um, 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 he he might be there anyway. But he's not coming with me. I don't know. I think he's when I talked to him, he wasn't sure if he was going to be going to RT at all or not. So, but. Um, uh, the guy in book four and book 12 will be there. Book four. Okay, wait. Oh, oh yeah. The guy with the the white tank. Yes. St- start me up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I love that the cover, the covers are, um, uh, consistent with the bar background and their picture on the front. I love the covers. They are so nice. Thank um, you. Yeah. That's good job. Good job. With yeah, that. we really, I, we really were super pleased with the way they turned out. And, um, yeah, and that's, uh, that's, you know, that's literally them standing in front of the bar. It wasn't photoshopped or anything uh, we you. had a, a bar in a local bar in Austin was just so nice to open their doors and let us spend an entire, um, morning doing the shoot there. So that yeah. was just great. Was the thirsty cool. nickel on six Street. What was, what's the name of the bar? Um, it was the, it's, it is the thirsty nickel. It's changed ownership, but the, the second time we went back for some pickup shots, the owners, uh, the new owners were just as nice as the owners when we did the first shoot. So it's, um, it's just been, it's just been terrific. They've been just lovely, 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 lovely. Oh, we and it's, like um, it. The yeah. thirsty nickel. Everybody, if you're in the area, go by there and, and tell them thank you and have a drink and leave a big tip. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's how you do that. <laughs> All right. So we will be looking forward to the man of the month. Um, there's 12 books in the series. So what's, what, what are you working on? Uh, can I ask you, do you, are you writing anything else along with that? I mean, um, that's a, that's I'm a not along, along with it. No, um, planning and thinking and doing some rereading. Yes. Because in October I am releasing the fifth full length book in my, um, Stark saga, so I have another Nikki and Damien book coming out and um, just because I want to kind of get in the groove for it, I'm, I'm rereading all of the novels and novellas because that series has gotten, it's got a lot of words in it now because there's mm-hmm. four full length books already and I think nine or 10 novellas. I'd have to, I'm not actually sure. I'd have to, I may be wrong about that, but there's a lot of them. There's a, but you know, a bunch of them. So I'm just sort of rereading and, and making notes for the, I know the story, but I don't, you know, I haven't put it on paper. Yet. Uh, so well, you're I'm one busy lady. Letting it, I'm letting it tell you. Yeah. You, you're a busy, yes. you're a busy woman. And, um, I, I salute you if that's the right word for it, because <laughs> you, you really stay on top of, um, on top of your game. And I, I love it. I love everything that you're doing. I, um, am actually on audible downloading a couple of books as we're chatting, because that's what I do. I, everything I, I do, I listen on audible. And then I have I some, I I have some books in my I, wish list and, uh, Oh, you're a good, you're an audio fan. I love it. I'm huge. That's, that's my, that's when I do most of my reading on. In fact, I'm actually really looking forward to my insanely long drive tomorrow because I am so behind on JD Robb <laughs> that I haven't read the one that released last September, which is so unusual for me. But as you might imagine, I've been a little busy writing. A little bit. <laughs> um, and so I'm super excited because I can download it and I can listen to it on the drive. Yes. Yay. That's, cool. that's, probably, <laughs> that's probably one of the things you're really looking forward to is listening to that book on your drive. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, I am so happy that you had a chance to come and hang out with me a little bit today. I know that you've got to finish getting yourself together and make sure you've overpacked as most people who go on cruises <laughs> normally do. Um, and I hope that you have a fantastic time uh, and, and take lots of pictures. It doesn't matter if you don't share them, you know, while you're on the cruise, as long as we get to them by this year, you know, fair enough. 2018 we'd like to see the pictures and um thank you so much for having me this is just awesome well any you are welcome anytime so if i don't make it to rt um are you going to be traveling or attending any other events this year yes okay so let's see i have got the um 
uh, origin event in which, no, it's not even on my computer. When is the origin event? Um, I'm doing Jennifer Armantrout's origin event in Austin, which I think is in, yeah, it's November. Okay. And, oh, no wonder everything's all out of order. That's why I'm doing Love and Books in Vegas in October. Mm-hmm. Um, what else am I? I'm not doing as much this year because last year was just crazy, crazy, crazy um, uh, travel. RT, I'm going to be speaking in Liberty States in New Jersey. It's an RWA conference, but I think book signing is probably open to the public. I, I don't know that for a fact. Okay. I'll be in Denver for RWA in July. Um, uh, what is this? I don't even know what this is. I'm going to be somewhere in November. So there you go. <laughs> we'll figure that one out. And I'm going to be at the Readers on the River in September, um, with J.R. Ward. So that'll be exciting. So yes, I am going a whole bunch of places and I need to make sure they're all up on my website because obviously I do not know where I need to be and when I need to be there. <laughs> but that's okay. As long as you are on the road, making that drive to Tampa to make, to get on that ship. So that's all you need to know about what's going on in January and you can figure out the rest of it, you know, as you go so you've got some time so so I don't know if I'm going to be at any of those but darn uh, you should you're not going to be at um uh book bonanza book bonanza that's the one yes oh, book bonanza yes. that's the one I said that I don't because I, I have an email here and that's all it says I only have one email so this is why I have an assistant because she takes care of me. But apparently, I'm going to be there because it's in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. So I'm trying to wait, 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 wait. See if, Where is Book Bonanza? It's in Denver. Oh yes, that's Book Bonanza. I'm like, like what is? I mean, yes, yes, yes. I'm so totally excited about that. Yes. Yes, okay. I wasn't originally in it, and then Colleen emailed me and said, did I want to come? And I was like, yes, are you kidding? Yes, yes, yes. But I'm terrible with names, so I didn't know what it was. I was like, <laughs> yes, That's- I am. And I'm going I'm going to be at RWA um, there anyway because they sort of they overlap. Apparently, we're going to have shuttles running between I, – I, I think there's going to be some people shuttling back and forth. So that's going to be so super cool. So, yes, I'm super excited about that. Well, I will so be I will there. see you there. You will see me, and I will have to come by, and we'll take some more pictures, and I promise I will post my pictures up right after we take them and I will tag you and oh I can't wait to see you I'm looking forward to it me too that's gonna be so much fun and that's Um, coming up really fast because it's already 2018 and it goes fast after February the months just come by so quick it's Uh ridiculous so um but thank you again so much for sitting down and chatting with me a little bit today before you're off on your um vacation I hope you have a great time with the readers and the authors and if I was there I would scuba dive with you although I'm kind of scared of fish anything in the water but (laughs) I would have I would have done it with you just because you know that's amazing well that that that, that warms my heart to know that See, you would do that with me. <laughs> next time, next time, if I make, a, if you guys do the cruise in 2019, I will try to make that my thing. And if you're there, we're totally scuba diving. Rock on. Okay. Yes. I'll hold you All to right. that. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you <laughs> thank so much. You. you have a good time and you we too. will chat again soon. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Booking Around Town. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Please be sure to follow us on Facebook at Booking Around Town. You can also find us on Twitter at Booking Around TWN and also on Instagram at Booking Around Town. You can hear this episode and all other episodes of Booking Around Town on our website at www dot the audio flow dot online you can also find it streaming on iHeartRadio, tune in google play itunes youtube and also spreaker thanks so much to my producer danielle at firefly productions and my assistant rebecca and as always thanks so much tune in next week as we will be chatting with meredith bond Don't forget to download your free audiobook today. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash the audio flow. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash the audio flow for your free audiobook. Thanks for listening.